This is the sermon by the Reverend Joseph Sitz at the celebration of new ministry of the Reverend John Pallard at Episcopal Church of the Holy Spirit, Apopka, Florida, November 16th, 2013. Oh my God, you are here. Oh my God, we are here. You are where we are always, and always you love us. When we are good, with a love that makes you glad. When we are bad, with a love that makes you sad. Yet always you love us. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's such a privilege for me to be back here in your pulpit again. One of the joys of being a retired and in relatively good health priest is that on Sundays, Margaret and I have the opportunity to visit many different parishes. That doesn't happen when you're a priest and affiliated with one parish and tied down all the time over the decades. Last spring, early on, I visited Holy Spirit on a Sunday and like the man who came to dinner, I stayed around for several months. It is wonderful that during that time, we were able to work together through the search and call process, and that Father John Pallard is now your priest. I think most of you know that Father John Pallard began his journey to the priesthood in the Episcopal Church through the Church of the Resurrection next door in Longwood, while I was privileged to serve as rector there. He and Eric came to visit our services one Sunday. And since then, they have told me that what hooked them was the bread. Well, no, it wasn't the bread of the Eucharist, as important as it is. Our parish had what is called a bread ministry. When someone or a family visited us for the first time, if we were able to get their address, on Sunday afternoon, a visitor from Resurrection would deliver a loaf of fresh bread with a little card of welcome and prayer attached to it. My instruction was that our volunteer just hand them the bread. Their purpose was not to chat, or to visit, or even to promote the programs of the church. Just give them the bread. Well, that brief visit was to simply send a message of community and caring and compassion. John and Aaron were handed the bread that afternoon, and like so many others, they were hooked. Well, although it wasn't blessed at the altar, maybe that loaf given to visitors was a part of the Eucharist after all. <coughs> it's been wonderful to see John and Aaron complete their journey to the Episcopal Church. There's lots of things that people can complain about in churches, but this was one time when the church worked like the church is supposed to work. Our epistle lesson for this afternoon is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And it begins by saying, Each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. <coughs> well, that isn't quite how it begins. You see, there's a single word that has been left out. The folks who decide on what lessons that we read on any particular service, they like a lesson to sound smooth. So they sometimes leave out a word or they adjust the beginning so that a particular lesson can sound like it makes sense all by itself. But when that's done, it's taken out of context. And the reading sometimes loses its connectedness to what comes before or after it. In this afternoon's lesson from the, uh, from the Ephesians, 
A simple word, the word but, is left out. If the word were in there, the reading would begin, but each of us was given grace according to the measure of God's gift, etc. And then Paul goes on to tell of the gifts which each of us had. But each of us was given. The question I wonder about is, but what? Back in the old days, I taught English and grammar. I know that a conjunction like but always refers to something that comes before or after. Do any of you ever watch the program The Bachelorette? <laughs> In it, after sorting through dozens of potential suitors over a number of dramatic weeks, it comes down to the final two. Well, Mr. Wonderful, to whom the Bachelorette theoretically will propose marriage. With great drama, the Bachelorette tells one of the two, usually the first, what a wonderful man he is, and how much she thinks of him, and what great qualities he has. And then there's a dramatic pause, when millions of viewers wait to see if that one little word comes next. But, but, she says, but I've fallen in love with another. And if we look at it carefully, the but that was left out of our reading from Ephesians is indeed one of the most dramatic buts in history. You see, just before this, St. Paul tells us that the church and the followers of Jesus Christ are all one. In one of the most inspiring verses in all of Scripture, he says, There is one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Here, St. Paul unequivocally says that the church is a unity, all together, it's not just a collection of pious folk, each of whom have their own interpretation of who Jesus is. It certainly sounds like those early Christians were all alike, doesn't it? But then comes the dramatic pause. And I can just see the camera panning to a close-up on St. Paul's face and the butt. But, says Paul, where our lesson picks up, but each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. And then he gives them a list, a list that I don't think Paul meant to be comprehensive. It's just a sampling of the gifts of the Spirit that each has been given. Each person, he says, has been given a gift has been given a talent, if you will, by the Holy Spirit. And although the Church, the Church of the Holy Spirit in Apopka, is and remains one in Christ, it is only so if each person, if each of you, recognizes that you have a gift, and then somehow you use that gift to uphold and strengthen the church. Although it's not been the same in some of the parishes that I have served elsewhere, here in Central Florida, it would be my guess that perhaps 80% or more of people who come to church have come from somewhere else, perhaps from another state, or perhaps even from another parish nearby. What I call parish hopping is really not that uncommon. And by the way, when that's done, the, when the clergy get together, they talk about you too. <laughs> well, at least in the parishes that I have served, some people have been known to leave and go to another parish because their 
miffed at a decision that was made, their nose is bent on a joint by something that was said, or maybe even they just got bored by my sermon. <laughs> when it did happen in my parish, in as gentle and diplomatic a way as I could, I tried to tell them to straighten up, get over it, and get back to church. Kind of. Wonderful being retired when you can say that stuff. <laughs> Remember our gospel lesson about Jesus sending out the 70 in pairs? He told them that when they went, they were to stay in whosoever home they were invited to. And they were not to be looking at how green the grass is on the other side of the fence. Christians are to serve where God put them and in whatever circumstances. God, our Lord, has you here at Holy Spirit at this time. And God has done that for a reason. You may never quite know why God has done that. But our Lord has placed you here to build up and to strengthen the parish and to support all persons, lay persons and clergy alike. Now there certainly are valid reasons for moving from parish to parish. But I think that Jesus and Paul would say, while you are at a parish, serve it well. And if you move, only do it for the right reasons. You have a gift from the Holy Spirit. Yes, you. You, each person, have been given a gift of the Spirit by which you are required by Jesus to use it to build up the body of Christ. You are to use it to build up the Church of the Holy Spirit. Everything you do, and every coffee hour conversation, every time somebody says something about Father John, or the choir, or the heat, or a noisy child, or the pews, whatever it is, every chat on the sidewalk following the service, you need to be thinking, how can I respond to be supporting the church and my clergy? The funny thing about today and this service is that we tend to think of it as a service to install Father John as your priest. But if you look at the title of the service, it is the celebration of new ministry. And that new ministry is not just the ministry of Father John, but it's the new ministry of all people, of all of the members of Holy Spirit. It's equally your ministry that we celebrate today. <clears throat> Twice I was privileged to serve as a deputy to the National General Convention of the Episcopal Church. At one of those conventions a few years back, some organization in the church gave out buttons for people to wear which said simply 99%. Since clergy are the ones who are up front most of the time and who do a lot of the talking and wave their arms around. It's easy for them to be of a mindset that they run the church. Those buttons were meant to be a tongue-in-cheek reminder that 99% of the ministers of the church are laypersons, not clergy. It's good for both clergy and laypersons to be reminded of that on occasion. I still have my button. Likewise, 99% of the ministers and Holy Spirit are laypersons. Discover and use your gift for ministry. It's then that the Church of the Holy Spirit will grow and prosper. Some parishes and search committees are fortunate to find a priest who is an adequate rector. But from what I know, you now have a priest who really knows what being a priest means. And in the, in the same person, you have a priest who seeks to lead, inspire, empower, console, and love those whom he serves. You have a wonderful priest. 
Do not forget that. Paul makes in his letter to the Ephesians. 
We are all in this together. You are all in this together. No matter who you are, no matter what your background is, this gathering of God's people called the Church of the Holy Spirit is a mutual ministry. Father John, Eric, each of you has a gift of the Holy Spirit. No matter how modest you may think it to be, it is an essential gift, and it takes your gift, the gift of each, to make the whole whole. Whether priest or layperson, it takes the gift of each to help our Lord continue in making the Church of the Holy Spirit the marvelous parish that it is today. May God's blessing be upon you and your family and your parish today and forever. Amen. Amen.